We're used to dogs assisting the blind. How about a monkey for paralysis or a parrot for a mental handicap? A growing number of animals are used to help people cope with a range of disabilities. At the same time, the government is considering a crackdown on what some consider abuse of the system. David Schechter reports. Mm -hmm. You gotta go quiet, otherwise you're freaking out in the middle. If horses could talk, they'd surely say Boy. nice things about Tabitha Darling. Good boy. Good boy. It goes from you to me. <laughs> Alright, good boy. Good boy. She's training this one. Alright, okay, After years with an abusive owner. The whole idea is to get them not scared of it. It's kind of like raising a kid. You gotta teach them the very basics on, the, uh, on their level. Once, she even trained a horse to work with the disabled. I do think that there should be an allowance for uh, comfort and therapy animals simply because who are we to judge when somebody needs something? Okay, big girl. Carolyn Feinfrock relies heavily on her dog, Ellie. All right, big girl. Show them on that hand railing. Come on, we're gonna go in a minute. Even picking up the important things she frequently drops. Can you give it to Mama, please? That's it, give it here. Very good, thank you. Carolyn is concerned that an expanding list of service animals, from snakes to ferrets, are used by people who may not really need them. Are they disabled enough to have the right? Are they disabled at all? Are they faking? But Tabitha is not just a horse trainer. <coughs> she is also legally blind. <laughs> My depth perception is terrible. Though her vision is better than Carolyn's, Tabitha relies on the service and friendship of her pony. She means the world to me. You have the girl. Not, not just a working animal, but she's, um, well, my friend. Girl. Trixie's leading Tabitha six miles to downtown Fort Worth. <laughs> Horse has the route memorized. We've been together for about eight years now. Including the drive through I'm hungry. <laughs> Gives me the independence and in getting out there that I need to. Because of that, my life is happier. But the problem is, where does the line get drawn? The use of service animals in public is protected under the law. You're my good baby, huh? But as the variety of service animals has expanded, <laughs> the federal government is considering limiting use to dogs only, to as originally intended. Good girl. Well, I do think that would help. It is a very um, touchy situation. Charlotte Stewart is an advocate for the rights of the disabled. She's opposed to any changes. If you need that in order to feel comfortable or secure, why shouldn't you be able to? Again, it's just like using a walker or a cane, in my opinion. It's one thing to debate what should and should not be a service animal while it's working outside. But what happens when a disabled person brings an animal inside and it's not a dog? Under the law, stores must welcome all service animals or possibly face a discrimination lawsuit. The government says limiting use to only dogs means more predictability for stores and continued acceptance for those Ram. who need animals the most, like Carolyn Feinfrock. Would be better than letting people abuse it and put it at risk for everyone else who's got real, legitimate disabilities. The trouble is, is there anyone who can say the way Trixie opens up Tabitha's world is not legitimate. He's kind of pretty much my life. <laughs> Good girl. David Shepard. Can't believe it.